So in the end, then I took the plunge and I bought a chain grinder. That's the sharp and the chainsaw. Now the importance of a sharp chain cannot be overstated, especially when you're going to be doing a lot of chainsaw milling. And that's because the ripping chain is a very shallow angle. And the shallower the angle is, the more important it is that the chain is sharpened accurately. And that's because if one tooth is at 10 degrees and another tooth is at 11 degrees, then the chain has a tendency to jump up or vibrate. It pulls away from the workpiece. So then I bought this Oregon 520-120 chain grinder. It's a mid-range chain grinder, but it's of good quality, made in the United States. It cost me about 600 bucks on Amazon. Now, considering it costs about $20 to have the chain sharpened at the local shop, then I reckon I should be able to recoup my money within one year to 18 months. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unbox this and see what we've got inside. Wow, I've never seen such a dirty box cutter. I'll still do the job. I got it from Amazon and the box came pretty beat up, but I think everything's in one piece. All right, so we've got the base of the unit and that can be mounted either on the wall or on the counter. Like this or up on the wall. We've got a set of three discs. Should cut all the chains I will need. chain gauge, the handles, an adjustment knob, and all the tools you need in order to assemble the unit. There's the instructions. And, and inside the instructions, then we've got a basic guide uh, to sharpening the chains. the spring for the release mechanism. So first we need to secure the upper housing to the motor unit and as you can see then there's a recess in the bolt hole where the bolt can fit through on this side. Stick the bolt through there. So we need to pass the bolt through the slot that adjusts the angle of the cutting head and then there's a little pin that goes into the recess and the bottom plate. So actually that assembly is all really straightforward. There's nothing complicated about that. Now we need to install a cutting wheel and there's a chart on the inside of the manual to tell you which size cutting wheel you need for which chain. Uh, column X is the width of the wheel. Now for the chain that I'm going to cut first I need a 1 8 inch wheel. So first you have to choose the right size wheel and in this case it's a 1 8 inch wheel. And you need to test the grinding wheel to make sure that it doesn't have a fault in it. So you need to tap it with a non-metallic device. And it should have a metallic sound to it. Now I'd have to say that this eighth inch wheel sounds a bit suspect to me. It has a metallic sound, but it doesn't sound very clean. There's the danger that the wheel could shatter if it has a fault in it. Well, I'm hoping that that wheel is okay. It doesn't sound as clean as the other ones. First thing you need to do is take the four millimeter Allen key and loosen the arbor shield. That's the plastic cover for the center of the grinder. 
Then you take the larger Allen key, it's a five millimeter Allen key, and you remove the flange nut. Once you've removed the flange nut, then you can remove the actual grinder flange itself. This is what holds the wheel in place. And it's quite simple. You insert a grinding wheel, replace the flange, and then tighten the flange nut. Make sure you don't over tighten the flange nut. And then we can tighten the nut for the arbor cover. So that was quite simple. We've got the entire chain grinder assembled and we've got the grinding wheel on. Next thing to do is take it into the workshop and install it in place. Also, before we start, we've got to spin the wheel and make sure that it's been placed on properly, that it doesn't wobble. And then we'll see if we can make our first cut. So see you in the workshop. So I decided to mount this on the wall. And it's not like I don't have a lot of space in the workshop, I've got plenty of space. But I don't see myself doing a lot of sharpening sitting down. It's because I'm not going to be doing that many chains. I'll just do one or two at a time. And I'd rather they were more or less at eye level, so I can see what I'm doing and do them quickly. And also, in the end, it saves space. The mounting holes are four and a half inches apart, so I need to mount them onto this cross piece. Now here we've got stud work, it means there's a space behind where I'm going to mount it. That's really important, I'll show you why in a minute. That's because the adjustment knob on the back, if you mount it straight to a wall, is going to be blocked. You won't be able to get to it, it won't fit. So I'd rather have this adjustment knob than have to use a wrench to do it. And so I need it to be mounted against this empty space in the stud work. Now there's something you should know, is the unit doesn't come with mounting hardware. So I had to find some large screws to use. These are the same screws I used on the ladder that I rigged up uh, for milling. So the first thing I need to do is drill some holes four and a half inches apart, and then mount the unit to the wall. One thing I forgot to do was install the handle, and I have to say that this handle looks a bit weedy. It doesn't look very substantial. There's not much to hang on to there, but I'm sure it'll do the job. So the last thing you have to do before you actually use it is you've got to check and make sure that the grind wheel has been installed properly on the flange. So that means you turn it on and visually check to make sure that there's no wobble in the disc. So first, make sure you're plugged into a fully grounded socket. And then you start the motor. I have to say the motor's quite quiet. And then visually check the disc to make sure there's no wobble. And then you know it's installed properly. So now we're ready to grind our first chain. Now it's really important that the chain is very clean. So I've had it sitting in this pot of old gasoline. You can use diesel, kerosene or gasoline, something to strip off the grease. It's really important because if the chain is dirty and greasy, then what will happen is the grinding wheel will become soiled. And if the grinding wheel is covered in oil and dirt, then it will heat up very quickly. And when it heats up, then it ruins your chain. So it's much better if the chain's very clean. And this one, We've had soaking in gasoline for quite a while and it looks really clean. And the next thing to do is mount it onto the grinding wheel and we're going to do our first grind. Question is, where do we get the information on how to set up the chain grinder? Well, a lot of that is in the booklet itself. These apply to Oregon chains. And you can find the information for the chain you've bought. Usually it's on the box of the chain. So you'll have to refer to the manufacturer's specifications on the grinding angles. And then we're gonna look at how to set these up on the grinder itself. So the first thing we need to do is set up the cutting angle. So we loosen the clamp on the bottom and then rotate the cutting angle, on the right hand side to 30 degrees. And then again, 
tighten up the clamp so it's firm and it doesn't move. The next thing we need to do is we need to adjust the grinder tilt angle. First we've got to loosen the clamp nut at the back and then tilt the head until it reads 55 degrees for this particular one and tighten it up again. And then with the backstop in place, we've got to make sure that the cutting wheel is going to take off a sufficient amount of the tooth. In general, you've got to set this up with the worst tooth, the one that needs the most taken off of it. And then you're going to make all of them the same. Make sure you adjust the backstop so that it's in the middle of the tooth, so that it holds the tooth firmly up against the cutting head. If you need to increase the depth of the cut, you can fine tune it by adjusting the nut that pushes the backstop into the back of the tooth. Then you can clamp the chain in place with the cam and you're ready to make your first cut. When you cut, Make sure you don't overheat the tooth. So cut just by tapping lightly on the tooth. So it doesn't overheat and you lose the temper from the cutting edge. And then you can advance the teeth one by one. So it looks like we're done that side. Again, loosen the clamp at the bottom and rotate the entire chain clamp until it reads 30 degrees on the other side. So we've done the left and the right side of the chain and then the last thing we need to do is we need to set the depth gauge so the back rakers on the chain they've got to be a little bit lower than the head of the cutting tooth and in order to do that then we've got to change the grinding wheel for the quarter inch wheel so again you're going to loosen the arbor cover let's get it out of the way and take the five mil Allen key. And we're going to loosen the grinding flange. Take that off. And take out the eight inch wheel. And then we're going to put on the quarter inch wheel, the fat one. We don't dress the quarter inch wheel like the other grinding wheels. We're going to put a bevel on it so that we're able to grind down the back rakers or the depth gauges. So again, 
spin the grinder and just check to make sure that the wheel is on straight and it's not wobbling. Cutting angle needs to be set back to zero and the head tilt is going to be put over to 60 degrees. Now you've got a dressing stone that came with grinder, that's for dressing the grinding wheel. Now we're going to use it, we're going to place it on the backstop and now we're going to dress it down on top of the dressing stone. Holding it with one hand. If you look at the depth gauge, it has different values for the depth of the back riggers. Here, what we need is 0 0.025 of an inch. So then we check this against the chain. And what we can see is that we need to take a little bit off of each of the back riggers. So in order to do that, and we have to adjust the depth of the cut, to just below where we were before because it only needs to take a little bit off. So we adjust it to the height, the existing height of the back rigger or the depth gauge so it moves freely and then we can lower it down slightly just to take a fraction off of each back rigger. And then we need to adjust the backstop so that the grinding wheel contacts squarely with the depth gauge. Well, that's my first time using the Oregon 520-120 chain grinder. And I have to say, I don't know how I lived without one before. The assembly was very easy, and it's a very robust machine. Initially, because it's Oregon, I thought it was made in the United States. But when I read the label on top, it says made in Italy. So there you go. It's a Western-made product. I'm going to have to get used to it, and I'm going to look into the tilt function. The other chain I've got to grind has got a 10 degree tilt. Now that's something else. So maybe we'll get into it next time. Now the main thing is, how does this chain cut now that it's been sharpened? And is it better than hand sharpened? I suspect it's a lot better. The other thing I noticed was that when I was hand sharpening it, my angle was slightly off. Because when I put it in the vise and set the cutting angle, I could see how much I was off every time I was sharpening this by hand. So I think if you want to do precision cutting, then this is the way to go. If you do a lot of chainsaw work, then it's worthwhile getting a grinder. Of course, you don't have to spend this much, but I decided that this mid-range machine had everything I need for my own work. The only difference between this and the 620 is that the 620 has a hydraulic clamp. And that means you don't have to clamp it manually every time. It automatically grabs the chain as you bring the cutting head down. But I think that's a bit excessive. I mean, I'm not doing this for a business. If I sharpen chains for other people, commercially, then I could make my money back very quickly. But I don't think I'll do that. I don't have time anyway. But I might sharpen a few chains for my neighbors. So anyway, thanks for listening and see you next time. Feels good.